Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, I am going to derive the relationship between pH as well as electrode potential. The next one is what is called ideal slope factor and how does the temperature influences the pH value. So these are few important questions which are very essential to know. So I am going to discuss all such things in this video, right? Now the relationship between pH and electrode potential. This is E. I have just written here, but this is the electrode potential. So here this electrode potential is how this is connected with this pH and how this pH meter works. So the detailed functioning of this pH meter I will discuss in the next video. But here I just define the relationship between the pH and the electrode potential. So the pH meter is used to determine the pH values. It is comprises of two electrodes first to make the assembly complete. So one is pH glass electrode and the other one is reference electrode. This potential difference between the pH elect glass electrode and the reference electrode is measured by using the Nust equation and from there we can determine the value of the pH. So here we are going to derive the relationship between pH and the electrode potential. How these two are related. So first of all we are going to consider the relation or this equation. In this equation we are having the H ion concentration on reduction it produces the H2 gas. And just to balance it, I have divided it by 1 by 2, right? So here is the hydrogen gas. It is produced like this. Now, we are going to write down the equilibrium constant for this reaction as we have written in previous case. So K is equal to H2 raised to the power 1 by 2. Here is the coefficient. So this coefficient will be goes into powers, right? Divided by H plus ion concentration. So in this manner, you can understand that H2 has one atmospheric pressure. So this K value, this equilibrium constant will be changed as 1 divided by H plus ion concentration, right? So on using the Nernst equation, what is our Nernst equation? Our Nernst equation is E is the potential is equal to standard electrode reduction potential. Actually, these two are the reduction potential. If I am not saying then it is understood that these all are reduction potentials. This is the standard electrode potential. Standard means at 290 and secondly it has one molar concentration of H plus ion concentration, right? Minus 2.303 into RT, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin divided by N number of electrons involved into F, F is the Faraday's constant 96500 coulombs, right. So here we are having this N for this hydrogen. How many electrons are involved here in this equation? So one electron is involved. Here you can see one electron is involved. So N will be equal to 1. So on putting all these values here, and if we say that activity of hydrogen or the concentration of hydrogen ions is very very low, then this minus log of H plus ion concentration can be understood like log base 10 1 over H plus ion concentration, right? This is log base 10. So here we have given log 1 upon H plus ion concentration. So this 1 upon H plus ion concentration can be written as simply pH, right? So I have written it pH. Fine. So don't get confused. This is minus. In some of the text, you will find it in the reverse manner. So in either way, you can understand. But this is the simple method, I think. And at standard electrode potential for this hydrogen electrode, it is E0 is equal to 0. So E cell will be equal to this much. So there is a relationship between E cell here, E is the electrode and there pH. Now this can be understood in this manner. If I write down 
that pH is equal to E divided by this value, right? Then for if suppose the change in the pH value is 1, say this is 1, then what will be the value of this E? This E will be equal to 0 0.0591, right? And this 0, whether it is plus or minus, I forgot about the sign here because I will discuss it afterwards. So on every change in pH, if pH value is changed, say 2 to 3, it changes. Then the potential of this electrode will change this much volts or you can say it is 59.15 millivolts you can write down. Fine. So this value is converted like this. So for every unit change in the pH, then the potential will change 59.1 millivolts. Now you can see few of the images. So here this value, this first one is the value of the potential 330 and this is positive. This potential is at pH 1.25. Now the next picture is given at pH 6.68. We are having 0 to 4 millivolts, right? This is again positive. Now the next one is, this is for pH 10.3 and the value is minus 168. So what inference you have made for pH 7, the electrode potential is 0, right? And for acid values, it is positive in nature and for basic values, it is negative in nature, fine. So that is why at pH 7, we are having this 0 value. So I hope you understand what I have given here. Now coming to the next, what is called ideal slope factor. So this ideal slope factor, before showing it, so this value, this pH, this value is known as slope factor because E is equal to E naught minus this 2.303 RT upon NF for this hydrogen ion is having value 0 0.0591 and this is replaced by EN slow factor this is known as slow factor right so here I am showing it to you when measuring the hydrogen ion so N is plus 1 number of electrons involved the slow factor at temperature 25 degree centigrade or 298 kelvins has the value 59.16 millivolts I hope you understand now for unit change in the pH right so this is what we have discussed this is termed the ideal slow factor so this is known as ideal slow factor here the value of this ideal slow factor En is given as 59.2 millivolts right and this uh, slow factor measurement gives the indication of the performance of the electrode system fine so this is how this slow factor is important now the next point is influence of temperature on pH right if the sample temperature does differ from the calibration temperature suppose you have calibrated your pH meter at 25 degree centigrade and now the temperature is 35 degree centigrade that is 10 degree centigrade or so we can say temperature coefficient is there and for the temperature coefficient you might know from the thermodynamics that the rate of the reaction changes two to three times so here if the calibration pH is 25 and you are measuring the sample at 35 degree centigrade then there will be an error of 0.15 pH units. It is because the ionic product that is H plus ion concentration multiplied by OH minus ion concentration strongly depends on the temperature value. Here you can see the values again. So in the previous slide I have not discussed. So here it is 0 degree centigrade we are having the slope factor at this value and at 50 degree centigrade we are having the slope factor value this for the same solution so this is how the temperature affects the pH value as well as the electrode potential so here you can understand because this En is equal to RT upon NF 
into 2.303. So this is directly related to the temperature. So if temperature increases, it increases. If temperature decreases, so it decreases. So this is how the temperature affects. Now you can understand this pH measurement is affected by the temperature in these four different manners. So first is the temperature coefficient of the measured solution. Second one is the temperature dependence of the slope. Temperature dependence of the slope according to the Nernst equation. Now position of the isothermal intersection. I will discuss this isothermal intersection while we are discuss about the calibration of the pH meter, right? The next one is differing response time of the electrode. If the electrode is temperature is very high or very very low, then the response time of the electrode may change because inside the electrode, the solution temperature will not occur at that particular temperature instantly. So I will discuss these last two points while we are discuss about the working of electrodes. Right. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.